going on guys it is Wyatt and in today's video we're going to be working on the EK Coupe this is going to be the first video in the build series on this car I showed you it a little bit in the last video not very much of it but here it is it looks a little bit rough as it is but uh the car is actually really straight there's like no dents in the car at all um just a little bit of you know paint cracking from when they did crappy primer on it but uh yeah so we're going to start with just cleaning the car up and uh, also in this video, we're gonna be putting the 2000 front end on it to check fitment and see how it looks. Um, as you guys can see, it is a 96 and it has the 96 front end on it. So I already picked up a new front clip off of a 2000 and we're gonna be swapping all that out and also just cleaning up the car a bit. So as you guys can see here on the window, it's got a bunch of overspray from when they were doing the bodywork, primering the car on it. And it's also got really crappy tint so in this video, we'll be ripping all the tint out, cleaning up the interior. Let me open it up real quick. So you guys can see it is pretty nice in here. It's got full interior. So uh, that's just the door panel sitting back there. I need to get a window regulator for that side. But anyways, it's pretty clean inside. So I think I'm gonna leave it a full interior car and uh, go from there. But just start with cleaning it up. Like I said, getting this old tint and all the overspray off the windows and uh, just go from there. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more in depth of, you know, the entire build on this car or if you guys just want little snippets of it and you guys would just prefer to see it running, you know, it's uh, whatever you guys want to see. If you want to see the full build of it, I'm more than happy to record it. So just let me know. But uh, yeah, other than that thing went and passed emissions with flying colors. So I can pull this motor out and uh, start mocking up my GSR. VTEC LS VTEC motor, which is over there. Um, you guys also saw that it cracked a ringland, so I think what I'm going to do on the motor is just put a single piston in it for now, get it back running, and only turn it to about 500 horse or so, and just get it in the car and running so that you know we can make some content with it. By then, I'm probably going to paint the car and, like I said, get the motor in it, get it running, and then build the other motor when I have some extra cash freed up. So, yeah, I'll have the other motor done probably for next season. But like I said, I'd rather just get it in the car and get it running just to, uh, you know, kind of make a proof of concept that it's going to work and justify to myself that it's worth all the time. So, yeah, let's jump into it. We'll start cleaning this thing out and uh, see what we can do. Figured before it got too dark, I would record a little bit more um, regarding the race car project, I guess. So as you can see behind me, I have the forklift out here and I've gone ahead and pulled a bunch of stuff off the Integra. Turns out 13 inch wheels don't fit on the front of these things. So uh, yeah, I can't put front wheels on it. So I'm gonna have to just load it onto my trailer with the forklift when I take it to the scrapyard. And uh, it kind of sucks, but it's not any big deal. I was gonna take the spindles off of it anyways because people are always looking for spindles for those cars. You can't buy them aftermarket unless they're really expensive, like a full race application. So uh, anyways, that's that. Um, as far as the car goes, let me flip the camera around. So as you can see, it's looking a little bit better. Um, at first glance, you probably won't notice anything, but I have the new tires that came off the Integra on the back. Um, these things are brand new Arizona Silver Editions on a 14 inch wheel. And I also got all of the ugly tint scraped off the windows. So no more tint on them whatsoever. I also got the inside cleaned up a bit. Like I said, still waiting on the latch for the glove box, but everything's cleaned up. Got the full interior put back in it. So it's looking really good. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna get done on it for now. I'm actually going to pull it out and start working on getting the Integra 100% stripped out. So that's the next project. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out and we'll uh, get the Integra pulled in here and start ripping some things off of it.
All right, as you can see, we have the Integra in the shop. I don't care what any of y'all say, that shit is fun. Working that forklift, moving this thing around, whatever. Mama says it ain't safe, I don't care. So anyways, we're gonna start stripping the rest of the stuff off of this car. As you can see, I got a bunch of stuff off the front here. So this is just a bunch of bolts and stuff. Um, luckily, these inner tie rods are actually interchangeable from these DAs onto my EK. As the EK inner tie rods are shot, they have like a freaking half inch of play in them. And these ones are brand new, so I'll be able to put those on my car. And also I have the sway bar here off the front, the traction bar set up, the new, those are brand new lower control arms with like maybe 10 miles on them. Um, yeah, so we're going to continue. I'm going to strip the wiring harness out of it tonight and everything else that I need. Hopefully I can get this thing completely gutted tonight and loaded on the trailer so I can take it to the scrapyard. So I got the tank down out of the car now and I've already gone ahead and pulled the fuel pump out of it. As you guys know, if you watch the channel, we were running a Walbro 450 fuel pump in it. Um, it's still a good pump, still works good. So I'm gonna be putting that in the new build um, in the EK's gas tank. And when we go for 800 horse, I'll either be running dual 450 in tank pumps with AM line, uh, feed line, probably a dash six or something, or we'll be going to an inline pump and all AM line, well, all AM lines as well. But with the inline pump, we'd be doing a sump in the tank. But we'll see where it goes. And uh, I'd really just like to do the in tank pumps, but we'll see how it works and go from there. Well, guys, we got the car completely stripped out and now is out of the shop. Um, as you can see, I got a ton of stuff I need to find homes for until we get it all sold. But uh, yeah, I got the car outside and uh, I've pulled off pretty much everything that I want um, or I think is going to sell. I still might pull off the rear bumper and little piece there. The only problem is the rear bumper is scraped up and this thing has a big hole in it for my kill switch. But other than that, the rest of the car is going to the scrapyard. Um, still need to pull the horn off, I just noticed that. But yeah, got it outside, so we're gonna throw it on the forklift and uh, we're gonna get it loaded up on the trailer. And there you have it. The car is up on the trailer. Just gonna strap it down and uh, should be off to the scrapyard. Like I said, kind of sad to see, but uh, on to bigger and better things. So, really looking forward to the new build. Kind of sad seeing this one go, but uh, in the end, it all works out, I suppose. All right, guys, at this point in the video, I don't really remember where I left off or what I've gone over on the car already. Um, so, I hope I'm not repeating myself. But as you can see, we got the 2000 front end put on the car. I'll flip around the camera. And it's not great, but it is good, you know. Um, I do need to get a new fender on this side or go through and straighten this out and do the body work on it to make that line up right. And, you know, the grill is a little bit misaligned. Right up here, you can see it sticks out further on this side than it does that side. Um, I'm pretty sure the car was wrecked, so I'm not exactly sure where the movement needs to be and I wish I would have realized that before I bought it but it's no big deal I can adjust for it it's not that far off and then on this side I just need to adjust the hood gap but this is all stuff I'll do after I paint the car or vinyl wrap it I'm not sure what I want to do yet but I'm throwing around the idea of just vinyl wrapping the car versus painting it as paint is really expensive and it would require a lot of work on the car 
where if I just wrap it, it's a lot cheaper in my opinion. Yeah, it doesn't last as long, but look at the Integra. I had that car for a year. I'll try and keep this one longer, but you know, if the lifespan on vinyl wrap is three years or whatever, then that's plenty of time for me. Um, but yeah, I can't decide really. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments and whichever one, you know, gets the most talk or whatnot, I'll go with that route. I kind of want to paint it, but like I said, at the same time, vinyl wrap would also be kind of cool. They have tons of new stuff out for vinyl and, you know, just cool designs and cool colors and whatnot. All right, now I'm just going to give you a look around the outside of the car. Um, I don't really have anything in mind, just wanted to show you guys around it and uh, kind of play with the GoPro footage and see what it looks like with a little bit of editing on it and see if we could maybe do some cinematography looking stuff. <laughs> so yeah, enjoy. Another thing I wanted to touch base on is a big thank you to a big thank you to all of you watching these videos. I uh, got my first paycheck from YouTube the other day, which you know wasn't great, but I'm definitely thankful for what it was, and it's all because of you guys watching and supporting the videos. So a big thank you, and uh, I put that money to use, um, put it back into the car, you know, so I can create content for you guys, uh, along with my money also. So uh, I ordered some parts for it. I have more showing up tomorrow, and I also have some here today that showed up. So we're gonna unbox those, show you guys what I've gotten for the car, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of discuss where I plan on going with the car and what we're gonna do for motor-wise. So as you can see, I've already unboxed the intake manifold I bought for this thing. To be honest, I'm probably gonna ship this thing back or try and sell it locally. I knew it was gonna be cheap, you know, it was 100 bucks. Uh, I expected poor quality, but I didn't expect it to be this bad. Um, you know, you can tell this thing's just a straight up skunk knockoff. They even have the freaking nameplate milled out on the top of this thing and no plate on it. Um, my biggest concern is down inside of here. You won't be able to see it very well at all. I'll have to grab a light. But uh, the runners that come up and how they merge into the plenum is just horrible. There's so much casting flaw in there that uh, it's just gonna turbulate the air, I think, a lot. So I'm probably gonna, like I said, ship this back or sell it local and go with a nice Edelbrock Victor X or uh, you know some, something like that, a nice sheet metal, you know, long runner, big plenum um, kind of intake. So we'll go over that a little bit more when I get the light out and show you that. But for now, let's go ahead and unbox these parts that I have already. 
All right, in this first box, I already know what this is. It is the new gauge cluster kind of dealio that I bought for the car. This is the same one that Kyle from Boosted Boys runs in his hatch. It just goes in where the radio does and it holds three gauges. Oh, it does not come apart like I expected it to. So anyways, this is all it is. Like I said, just a little plate that's bent. <laughs> Go figure, freaking 10 bucks off eBay or whatnot. But like I said, this just goes in where the radio does and just kind of clips on and you can have your gauges put in here, three gauges, my air fuel, oil pressure, and boost gauge. So it's just a more convenient spot and I wouldn't have to make something. So I just picked this up off of eBay. In the next box, I have a window regulator. This is for the driver's side as mine in the car currently is dicked, um, totally stripped out, you know, like all these Honda ones are. So yeah, once I can figure out how to open this box. So that's all it is, just a new window regulator. I'm gonna get that put in today so that I can put the window up, which will be nice since it snowed yesterday and uh, I had to put a bag over the window. And in the last box is a big surprise and kind of the direction that the car is going in. So, Hopefully these are the right ones. As you can see, Nippon piston rings and a box of pistons. As you can tell, I don't have any rods. And my kind of goal with the car right now is to get these pistons put back in. These are the same pistons that are in the motor right now that made 600 wheel horsepower. Pull one of these out. They're just Nippon pistons. These are, as you can see, I don't know if you can, but 0.5. So it's a 0.5 uh, bore over, which is an 81.5 millimeter bore. And these should be the full floating ones, which it doesn't look like they are or missing no they should be but anyways these are full floating um, wrist pins and they are for the aftermarket rods that are already in the motor so yeah I'm gonna get these put back in and just get the motor running good like it was at about 500 horsepower first just to uh, get it in the car and get everything working correctly as it should and after I have it in the car running, that's when I will put together the other motor that I'm going to build for the car and uh, shoot for seven or 800 horsepower on that motor. But I wanted to get it running just for proof of concept and to also get, oh yeah, there's my snap rings for the wrist pins. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, uh, like I said, get the motor back running with a good piston in it since the piston that is in it has a cracked ringland, I hope. And uh, once we get these put in there, we're gonna get the motor put in. I've already ordered motor mounts and some other cool stuff I'm gonna be showing you guys in a later video. You guys are gonna be stoked for it. It's been a long time coming to uh, get the other stuff in that I'm going to do. Um, I'm not going to give you any secrets right now, but you guys will enjoy it. It's going to be sweet. It'll probably be in an upcoming video, uh, probably two or three out from now. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get the motor put back together with a fresh piston in it and get it put in the car running and driving just for proof of concept so that I know I'm not wasting my time on this project. And uh, after that, we're going to get crazy with it. But uh, before I paint it or anything like that, I just, like I said, I want to get everything in it you know, all the wiring done, any grinding or welding I have to do. I want to get all that done so I can paint the car and just be done with it, not have to cut up anything or mess up any of the fresh paint. So yeah, I'm going to get that in. I'm going to get the window regulator done today and that'll probably be the end of this video. I'm going to try and get another one out soon. I, uh, I hate just pushing out content for you guys. I like having enough content that I can make a good video for you guys instead of just rushing to get a video out. So that's why it takes me so long to uh, get videos out to you guys. Another thing I just thought of while we're here is the new taillights on the car. 
I got those in today as well and put those on. They look a lot better than those really hazed over other ones. But yeah, that'll be it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one. That's going to be an interesting project. So yeah, go ahead and give the video a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And you guys have a great day. Peace.